Today we're going to share with you our top 10 favorite day trips out of Anacortes, Washington while full-time RVing. And we're going to share with you a tour of the RV park that we found for this huge rig that we live in and give you a tip on how we find these ideal locations. I'm Tammy and this is my husband Scott. We are two artists who would face with mounting health challenges decided, you know what, life's way too short. So we sold our home and most of our stuff to move into a home on wheels. Along with Gracie and Jasper, we've hit the road full time in search of new landscapes and experiences. We'd love to have you join us as we navigate our way through this RV lifestyle. And until further notice, our mission is explore, create, and inspire. If you've been following our channel for a while, you know that our full-time RV lifestyle means we find a spot that we really want to be in and we plant ourselves there for a while, like a month or a lot longer, a lot longer. A lot longer. That way we can really experience the local flavors and see all the things we want to see and do on our bucket list. So we use our home on wheels as a home base for all of our daytime adventuring and experiences. Let's get to the fun stuff. Hey, we made it to Fidalgo Island. We're in Anacortes. Anacortes. I don't know how to say it. Okay, what was your favorite? Well, obviously my favorite was whale watching. We saw so many whales. Oh, no, just some killer whale families swimming around. I totally checked off seeing orcas in the wild off my bucket list. The boat was incredible. We had a place to stay warm because it gets cold out there. Yep. And we went in May, at the beginning of May during birthday week for yours truly here. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and it was quite cold out on the water. So it was nice to have a place to duck inside, get a warm drink. But this is beautiful. It's very cold. Very cold. Very cold. But we have beer and hot cider, so we're good. And they have three levels. So no matter where you're at, you get a front row seat. We saw two pods of killer whales, a gray whale. We saw stellar sea lions. Of course, we saw bald eagles. But what was so cool is they have a naturalist on board. So we learned so much about everything we were seeing around us. So we went with Island Adventures and we would highly recommend them if you're in the area and get a chance to go whale watching. It was worth every penny. The number two favorite thing about taking day trips out of Anacortes was the ferry. Yes. The Washington State Ferry is based out of Anacortes. Goes all over the place. You can drive on, walk on or bike on and you can even take your kayaks on we saw people doing all of that we had one cool experience where we walked on it was like 30 bucks round trip for both of us and we got off at friday harbor spent the day got back on and came home all within a day it's a really fun way to get out and see the islands get on the water that was our ride and as we're going through our list of our top 10 favorites don't forget, we have episodes specifically on each one of these things if you want to refer back to them and see what it was like before you venture out to. Speaking of Washington State Ferries, this one takes its own place on the list. A visit to Orcas Island. Yeah, it even sounds romantic. It sounds cool. Orcas Island. Yeah. Orcas Island, here we come. This time we drove aboard the ferry. We even took Gracie with us. Yeah, you're on a ferry. And we went and spent seven hours exploring the island. It was magnificent. Moran State Park and, and, and seeing that Cascade Lake for the first time was just mind boggling. And that was just the beginning of our day. So we visited Moran State Park which also took us up to Mount Constitution, the highest point in the San Juan Islands. And from there you can get a 360 degree view and wave hello to Canada while you're at it. And then we did this epic waterfall hike called Cascade Falls. We even spent a little time in East Sound Village. 
We did this all in seven hours, hopped back on the ferry, and came back to the campground. But next time we're going to take the kayak so we can get out on that lake. Yeah, we wished we took our kayak with us. So number four wasn't even on the list of things that we thought we were going to do. It just happened to be a really pleasant surprise and we definitely think you should add it to your list. And that is get out and explore the Skagit Valley. There are so many cute farm stands with fresh vegetables, um, homemade pies. We overdid it a little bit on the homemade pie section of Skagit Valley. Now I'm seeing pies across the street too. We're surrounded by fresh baked pie, adorable side stand, farm deliciousness. But you can't bring up the Skagit Valley without talking about that tulip festival and we hit it perfectly. Without even trying. No, we didn't even know. So if you're there in April, go see the tulips. I never thought I'd be so excited about tulips, but it was awesome. It was just fields and fields of rainbows of colors all around you. And speaking of the Skagit Valley, we felt like the little village of Laconner deserved its own number on the best list. So number five is go see Laconner. I think we made three day trips to Laconner. So Laconner is this little historic seaside village. It's actually on an inlet, right? It is on the Skagit River? Squinomish Channel. Is that right? Squinomish Channel. I, I will think, put it I on the screen the, below because we don't know. <laughs> there's a channel that divides the channel divides the mainland from Fidalgo Island and Laconner sits right on the channel. Real close to Deception Pass. Yep, and there's Rainbow Bridge. There's all kinds of art galleries. As a matter of fact, Scott made a new friend who's an artist who took him out for some art painting plein air trips, which was super cool and unexpected. Out in the valley by La Connor. It's a good, good day. There's antique shops, just all kinds of little eateries, the waterfront boardwalk. It's magical and there's so much history they have lots of history they like totally just embrace their history and we we love that sort of thing so laconner is definitely a place to go check out what do you think of laconner laconner is super cool i don't know about you but every time we go somewhere we look for the high point some place that you can get advantage of your surroundings so that brings us to our number six favorite day trip and that's to drive to the top of Mount Aguirre right there on Doggo Island. We got up there for sunsets, for a moonrise. moonrise. Scott had a lot of fun taking pictures. You could see everywhere around you. And you can also hike up to the whole top if you're ambitious, but we're not that ambitious. We drove up. But anyway, the views from up top are incredible. I mean, you could look at you could look out over the Skagit Valley and see the colors in the tulip fields as the full moon rose over the mountains. And if you're a rock climber, it's a really hot rock climber destination as well. And you get a bird's eye view of number seven. What's number seven? Number seven is Deception Pass. Oh, Deception Pass. Yeah. You can't talk about going to Anacortes without talking about Deception Pass State Park. We were super confused when we heard of Deception Pass because in Colorado, passes are mountain tops. Yeah, we kept looking up. Yeah. But it was down. The pass is the waterway. It goes in between Fidalgo Island and Whidbey Island. Yep, and the bridge that connects them, it's a historic bridge, it's like 180 feet off the water and it's a sight to see in itself. And on the Fidalgo Island side of the bridge, we really enjoyed hiking around at Bowman Bay. Gorgeous trail that leads you around the point and you can look out over the Juan de Fuca. Is that what it is, the Juan de Fuca? Strait of Juan de Fuca. Okay, that. And then on the Whidbey Island side of the state park, 
You've got Cranberry Lake, which we really love kayaking in. There was a bald eagle's nest. That was super cool. We're just like hanging out in the water and the bald eagle's sitting up there. Thousands of shoreline feet and we were looking for agates. So now we get it. They call it a pass because that's how you get from Skagit Bay over to the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And while we were out on the trails, we saw some really experienced sea kayakers trying to navigate those waters. So if you're an experienced kayaker, give it a try. I mean, we wouldn't do it, but... But, but hang on a second. Uh, something I want to say is if you like what we're doing and you like the content that we're putting together, we'd really appreciate it if you give us a little encouragement by giving us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and ring that notification bell. Ding the bell. Good plug, babe. Thanks. Good job. That's You're good. getting the hang of this. It really does help us out and helps other people see our content. And we'd love to know your feedback in the comments below because that helps us know if we're doing things right, if we can improve somewhere, what kind of content do you want? Do you want to see more RV life? Do you want to see more adventures? So drop us a comment, let us know you're out there, and we love connecting with our community. All right, on to number eight. Speaking of kayaking, sea kayaking. That was pretty epic. We got professional help, and they did all the work. They, uh, they set us up in a three-person kayak called the party barge yeah and Luke sat in the back to control the rudder I sat in the middle and paddled Tammy what did you do I filmed content oh. for our viewers and I did help paddle you give me no credit for that at all it's on video you can see it proof living proof that I did help but it was super fun we circumnavigated an island I got a pet a sea cucumber <laughs> and we saw some harbor seals and it really just gave us a little bit more confidence before taking our own kayak out into the salty waters. Yeah, it came highly recommended to us that you don't go kayaking out in the tides without getting a little professional advice first and experience. Yeah. So yeah. we did do that and it humbled us to the point that we're not going to go trying anything too aggressive no. and are inflatable. No, but we have done a few trips coming in future episodes with our kayak on the seawater and we will, we're will we excited to share those with you. Yeah, so today we're going to have our first sea test of Hope Floats, which is what we named the inflatable kayak. <laughs> that one popped up right next to the kayak and was staring at us. Probably was. Number nine was a tip that came to us from a couple of ladies that worked in a art gallery that was inside a barn. Yeah, they call it the pickle barn art they, gallery. They said, have you gone to Chuck a Nut Road yet? And we said, what road? It says it's the only place where the Cascade mountain range meets the sea and it is stunning. We interrupt this broadcast because Jasper needed to make an appearance. Say hi. Whiny boy. He doesn't like it when we talk to the camera. He's not he's not about the vlogging voice. I don't know what it is. Yeah. An anti-vlogger. Yeah, he's an anti-vlogger. Anyway, he's gonna hang with us for a minute. The thing that makes the Chacana Highway a great day trip out of Anacortes is it's close. It's very scenic, it's narrow, Beautiful. and uh, you drive out along the cliffs, kind of like a little bit like uh, Big Sur-esque. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and along the way, you, you can stop at a state park. Larrabee State Park was gorgeous. You can go down to the beach, there's hiking trails, picnic areas, camping. And then when you get to the northern end of the route, you can stop for lunch and eat on a patio, and what was it? name of that town? It's Historic Fairhaven. It was so cute. Shops, galleries, eateries, and it was very quaint and charming. So you can end your trip there, 
go get a bite to eat and then drive back and enjoy a sunset view. And last but not least, Anacortes itself makes number 10. I believe there's like over a hundred murals that were painted by a guy from his wheelchair. It's a really cool story and it's really fun. It's almost like a scavenger hunt to go around town and find them. Anacortes is a maritime hub. They have big shipyards and they build ships and they push them off into the water. And they have a pretty sizable marina called Cap Santa. It's a boater's paradise and it's really fun to walk around and wish that you were a boater. Yeah, we need a boat. In the words of Glen Campbell, it's a great place to sit and watch the tide roll away. On the dock of the bay. Now let's talk about the RV park where we stayed in our big rig and home based out of for all of these cool adventures. Pioneer Trails RV Park was so easy to get into from the highway. Well, you, there were two roundabouts. Two roundabouts, but they were easy. When you got a rig as big as ours, they see you coming and they say, oh, we've got one site that'll fit you. It's our <laughs> premier site. So we ended up having to upgrade a little bit for a five week stay, but it was worth it. We had a we little- We did not have to upgrade. We had a cabana. <laughs> They have a lot of big rig friendly sites. They're all full hookup and they're all fairly level. It's gravel. Everything is like maintained to the little shrub. I mean, I've never seen such a maintained landscape campground. And we did upgrade to the deluxe site um, just because it wasn't that much more and we thought, why not? And so what that meant was we got an extra big site and we got this little um, like gazebo, which was really kind of cool. Cabana. Cabana with our picnic table under it. We'll show you pictures. Anyway, it was a beautiful RV park. We even got our own mailbox and package delivery. They even fill your propane and bring it right to your site. They've got lots of green grassy areas, a playground. Um, it's super pet friendly. They have a dog park and they have these awesome little cabins that are also situated with RV hookups. So if we go back there, we would totally rent a cabin and RV space. And that way when the kids come to visit, they'd have their own little cabin to stay in. Our site was at the front of the campground. So it was a little noisier and full disclosure, it's right next to the naval base. So a couple times a week you get flyovers, which we got used to and it was actually kind of cool. But um, I think it was usually on Wednesdays. Yeah, they had a routine. It wasn't every day and you just got used to it. And it was kind of cool seeing them fly over. But uh, the internet and the cell service were awesome. But the best part is the location was perfect for all of these day trips that we went on. And a little tip for you, Tammy's tip for the day. <laughs> If you want to know how we find these locations so that we can fit our big rig so that they're pet friendly and they've got everything we need, we use this awesome app called RV Trip Wizard. I will be sure to link it down below. You get a free trial so you can play with it and see if you like it. And it's really reasonable if you decide to buy it. But it's so awesome because we can pick kind of our destination. We will zero in and look at the different campgrounds. It will give you reviews of what people have said about the campground. You can change your filters so that you only get campgrounds that are big rig, pet friendly, any of the amenities that you desire. And it can be forest campgrounds and state parks and anything. This app does everything, a gazillion things. I won't talk all about it now. I'll put a link to another video we did all about the tools we use for routing and planning. But that's our favorite one and that's how we found Pioneer Trails RV Park. So in a nutshell, we loved Anacortes. We had a great time there and we would definitely go back. Yeah, I'm actually excited to go back because now we've just got a taste of it and there's so much more exploring to do. 
So till further notice, we're going to say goodbye, happy travels, and get ready because now we're in the South Puget Sound in the Olympia area and we're ready to take you on some new adventures right here. Now we just have to make it back through those two rounds.